Today, we'll take a deep dive into the newest safety precautions put in place here at East and North. We'll cover the highlights of this year's Community Street Festival taking place in downtown Columbus. We'll, we'll cover sports. We'll cover the latest in sports, including dates and upcoming games. All that and more in this edition of Torch TV. Welcome back to Columbus East Media Studios for another episode of Torch TV. I'm your host, Riley Crotty, and alongside me is Oliver Carr. Oliver, how are you doing today? I'm good, Riley. I'm really excited to get my Torch TV career underway. Now let's get into today's show. Safety in schools has become a major issue in the last few years. So, with the new school year comes new procedures and precautions. Lindsay Mellis joins us in the studio with more. Returning students may have noticed some differences upon entering the school this year. These changes are just some of the ways BCSC has tightened safety measures in response to recent events. At the start of the school year, students at both North and East were greeted with several changes to increase safety in the schools. Probably the first thing you notice is getting funneled through the main office, I would guess. Obviously, if, you, if you've gone through the front door, the, after uh, the bell rings it's you got to be buzzed in it's an inconvenience for sure because now we're funneling kids through through a smaller area but you know it gives us more eyes on the people actually coming in and then also it, it allows us to help them a little bit quicker to get them to where they're going and and get um, so that's that's one with so many students traveling to either c4 classes at other schools or off campus for lunch monitoring who is allowed inside the school is especially important so basically the, the perimeter of the school we're trying to really make sure is secure. So once you're inside we hope that you don't even really have to think about it and you can go about uh, being a good student and, and just have fun. I mean certainly it needs to be stressed now more than ever. I wouldn't go so far as to say we need metal detectors and some of these things, but I would go so far as to yes we absolutely need to have these doors locked. Inside the school additional student resource officers and teachers are also doing their part to keep their students as safe as possible. I've always had that kind of mentality of I'm close to this and so even before the doors were required to be locked my door has always been locked unfortunately that is where we are in this country but there's certainly little things I can do so I mean I have been doing this for a number of years in the past year it has become more important than ever for both staff and students to continue to follow the new safety guidelines and to be aware we do a lot of great things uh, and in, in years past we've been doing good things um, and so the difference maybe between last year and this year is again some, some recent events um, and other times where we learn from those, okay? So they're not um, events that we brush off lightly. To not talk about it and pretend it won't happen is not taking advantage of that time that you have to get people prepared. I mean, obviously it's a horrible thing to have to talk about, but I think it's better to have put that out in the open and say, what could you throw at somebody right now? <laughs> Both officers have seen positive responses to the new changes and hope to see that continue throughout the school year. Lindsay, if a student happens to see something out of place, who should they go to? If you or someone you know notices something, talk to the student resource officer at your school, your teacher, or any staff member. Calling all runners. The Feeling Peachy 5K is taking place Saturday, September 10th at 1 p.m. Entry into the event costs $25 and is open to all ages. More details can be found on Columbus East High School homepage and announcements and updates. Seniors, there will be a meeting next, next Friday, September 9th. Information about 2023 graduation. This will take place during advisory in the auditorium. If you have any questions or concerns about the ceremony, make sure to attend. If you're interested in video games, you should join the brand new eSports Club. Meeting, meetings are held every Tuesday and Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 in room 257. Feel free to bring your own device and have fun. Coming up after the break, we'll explore the Community Street Festival in downtown Columbus. And stay tuned for the latest in East Sports news. All that and more after the break.
teens tend to develop a sense for who they should be through social media. Teens rely on it to make decisions about music, fashion, and they feel pressured to fit in. When teens receive negative feedback or sarcastic comments, it can really cause a negative impact. Don't let social media define who you should be. On Friday, August 19th, First Christian Church, the Public Library, Lincoln Central Family Neighborhood Center, and the Council for Youth Development hosted a festival in the middle of downtown Columbus. There were activities for all, such as food trucks like Taco Columbus and Kona Ice, nationally renowned music mu magician Zach Mears, and other activities dedicated to younger kids. One of the largest events of the night was a dunk tank where people had the opportunity to dunk First Christian Church pastor Steve Yetton and our very own BCSE superintendent Dr. Roberts. The cost for each throw was a canned good, which was then donated to the blessing box outside First Christian. It has been difficult to create socializing opportunities for the past two years, so the Community Street Festival was an accessible way to welcome people back together. The Street Festival uh, kind of started out with a back-to-school idea for First Christian, and we was really just thought it would be neat to take it out to the streets and to partner with some other organizations that really care about youth. So kind of wanted to do something that was fun and about our community and not about just one organization. So we just want to provide opportunities for children, youth, and adults to get to interact with each other, meet each other, and have a really good time. It brings together people from all walks of life. Sometimes families don't have the same financial opportunities that others do, and so they need things that are a little bit more cost effective. And that was a wonderful thing about the Community Street Festival is that it was free and open to the public. I think it's a great fun way to start out the school year and just a time to get together and celebrate that we love Columbus and that we love uh, the students and kids of Columbus. We saw more smiles and um, just getting to interact with the kids and seeing everybody have so much fun um, from the organizers to the vendors to the participants. Families of veterans experiencing financial hardships can apply for $500 per dependent child to help with back-to-school back to expenses. Students must live in a veteran's home. The deadline is September 15th, so be sure to apply as soon as possible. The website is in.gov forward slash DVA. We're one month into the school year, and fall sports are in full swing. Got a lot coming up this week, so Andrew Jones is here to give us the play-by-play. Thanks guys. Tonight your Olympians have several matches against rivals. For home games we have boys varsity tennis against Jennings County at 5 p.m. Boys JV soccer against Seymour at the soccer complex at 5.30 and boys varsity soccer against Seymour at 7. For away games we have girls varsity golf at Shelbyville at 5 p.m. Girls JV soccer at Providence at 5.30 and girls varsity soccer at Providence at 7. Tomorrow boys varsity football will be competing at Seymour at East at 7 p.m. With the Seymour Owls sitting at a 1 to 1 win loss ratio the Olympians are seeking their first win of the season. Be sure to come out and support your O's to absolute victory. Saturday will also have a lot of competition between Olympians and opponents at lots of different locations. For Columbus North Classic matchoffs at Saraland, boys and girls varsity cross country will be competing at 9 a.m. For Providence High School matchoffs, we have girls varsity volleyball at 9 a.m., boys JV soccer at 10, and boys varsity soccer at 11:30. All of which are at Providence. For Seymour matchoffs. We have boys freshman football at 10 a.m. and boys JV football at 11.45 at Seymour. Monday, girls varsity volleyball will be playing at Shelbyville at 6.30 here in the Orange Pit. Be sure to come on out and support your Olympians. Keep up to date with all Olympian athletics by checking the uh, athletics calendar on the East website or download the Columbus East Athletics app. That's all we have for sports today. Riley and Oliver, back to you. That's all the time we have for today. From Oliver, Jonesy, Lindsay, and the rest of the Torch TV crew, I'm Riley Crotty. Thanks for watching. And as always, try to be the best part of someone's day. <laughs>